Oh, sorry about that. I was looking for the uh, map festival. Is this the map festival? Wonderful. I brought some Lululemon. Oh, you love Lululemon. Great, well, let me show you what I got. Today on Grand Thumb, the SIG Rattler. A lot of interesting little tidbits about where this came from, but this is a personal defense weapon, it is a rifle, and it is chambered in 300 blackout, which is a very interesting caliber. Uh, this is a very small boy. There's a lot to talk about, so stay tuned as we do what we always do and we delve into different weapons. But before we do, we have to thank the biggest sponsor of the channel, the Sonoran Desert Institute. A big thank you to them if you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing. They are the people to go to. We cannot thank them enough. They've supported the channel for a long time, despite uh, how many times we've butchered their name, which will not be today. But a big thank you to the SDI. Go and check them out. And uh, we also have to uh, give a shout out to Micah, my camera guy, my usual camera guy. He is out. His wife has had a baby. He is on baby leave, so give him a big congratulations. We do have a stand-in, Justin, who is actually the same person. It's actually just a clone of Micah, so it all works out well. But we, of course, cannot forget Primary Arm. Awesome optics at a great price. We love them. They're compact one day. It's one of our favorites. They just have a lot of great choices, so go and check them out. Um, Primary Arms gets a lot of crazy emails from you guys, mostly because of Charles. Charles isn't here to mess anything up, so maybe email them and tell them that you like them a lot and you'd like to give them a, uh, a warm hug or something like that. And a big thank you, of course, to Mantis, a big sponsor of the channel as well. If you're looking to do dry fire, which you should be doing a lot of dry fire, it is actually one of the best products out there. We actually love them quite a bit. Um, completely fortuitous that they decided to think we were cool enough to sponsor us. A big thank you to them. Go and check them out. Uh, we love them and dry fire should be a big part of your training. Isn't that right, Justin? You, you can say yes. <laughs> okay, there you go. And unlike the camera that this is filmed on, unlike the TV you're watching this on right now, AAC ammunition is made in the US. We actually used all AAC ammo today, so to give them a big shout out for, uh, you know, being cool for the channel, allowing you to uh, have a good time. We're all, that's a big thank you to them. So right here we have the SIG Rattler. Now before we get into the review, it's important that we do our full disclosure. If you're not getting a full disclosure from your reviewer, problematic. We've obviously done a lot of SIG reviews in the past. There's a lot of military procurement going on. And beyond that, there's a lot of products being released. So we have received products from SIG. We have reviewed those products. We have never been paid any money for reviews. Um, but we have, uh, obviously we have the SIG LT. We have certain firearms that we have received from them um, for those reviews. And we still have those for comparison's sake in our inventory. So you need to understand that going into this. Now, in the case of the Rattler, um, it was purchased by me. But that being said, we do have a relationship with SIG. So please understand that despite all of that, we are always as unbiased as possible. All ammunition was provided for by AAC and not by SIG. So that is how that goes. The optic is from Wilcox um, on loan as a quick note. Otherwise, everything else is just purchased by me. So the SIG Rattler actually has a pretty interesting uh, history. Uh, I've been lucky to be able to talk with a lot of the employees over at SIG to discover exactly how it came about. So essentially what we had was a international soft partner who's close to the United States asked for a MCX and they wanted to see how short they could get it. It's really not anything that crazy. Um, SIG uh, continually shortened the barrel until they got to a point where it became unreliable. They made some changes to the gas system and they were able to get uh, what we have here today, which is Rattler, which is probably the shortest 
that you can go on the SIG system without running into, into some pretty significant issues. So the SIG Rattler as a whole is still used by SOCOM. Um, I can't speak to how much it is used. I'm out of the military at this point and uh, my buddies are still in, can't exactly speak to that publicly, but it is definitely within the inventory. It's been seen in many photos and all, all the different variations of the Rattler as you see them out in the wild. But the variant that we have right here is going to be the commercial variant, which is a 5.5 inch barrel. Um, this is a short stroke gas operated weapon. Uh, much like the AR-18. If you're familiar with the AR-18 at all, it's always been an AR-18. It always has been, or Mike is gonna pop up that meme right now. Please do it, I'm, I'm dying right now. Okay, memes up. The AR-18's operating system is very popular, which is why you see it in the SIG MCX, you see it in the G36, as well as many, many other firearms. It's just a successful, well-proven system. In the case of the Rattler, or the MCX Virtus, or just the uh, MCX in general, the system has been pretty well perfected. So let's go ahead and let's talk about this system and uh, how it kind of works and why it was designed. Now, the Rattler does come in other calibers beyond 300 black. Uh, 556 is another one that it comes in, also a 5.5 inch barrel. This was originally designed for the military so that they could have ease of cost of training. They didn't have to continually, you know, use 300 black out. This is generally not something that we recommend. I would not recommend the 5.5 that's extremely short for 5.56 and not terribly um, effective. So if you're gonna get a Rattler in 5.56 with a 5.5 inch barrel, just don't. It's not a good thing to do. Now uh, within the military, there is a 7.62 by 39 version for uh, you know all that kind of spooky shit. So those are out there, but you typically don't see them. So the Rattler is obviously a very small weapon. Easily foldable, very compact. It was designed primarily as a personal defense weapon and as a CQB weapon, or as we, like to say on Grantham, uh, just your good old murder weapon. So obviously if we were to lengthen the barrel a few inches to about seven or six inches or eight or nine, you can get a lot more performance out of the 300 black compared to you know the 5.5 inch barrel we have here. But you have to understand that the Rattler is pushing very heavily towards one side of the spectrum, which is autism. Um, just kidding. It's going to be CQB, right? So obviously this could be a much more effective weapon if we, if we added more barrel length. But you have to understand that this is purpose built. It is made to be as compact as possible. And because of that, there are sacrifices that are gonna be made to the overall operation of the weapon system, as well as the overall terminal ballistics that you're gonna be getting out of the rounds being fired from it. So if your whole argument against the Rattler is that it's not terribly effective with 300 black, yes, noted. That's not what it's for. Thank you for your input. No one cares. Now, the Rattler falling into that PDW category um, definitely has a couple different competitors out there. Uh, most notably, I would say the Honey Badger is a big competitor. You also have the MP7 and the P90, which kind of fall into that PDW category, but due to their uh, due to the round, they're they're not good at some of the stuff that the um, 300 Black is good at. So, we'll primarily compare this against the Honey Badger today when we're doing a couple comparisons. In certain ways, the Sig Rattler is a better weapon than the Honey Badger, and in certain ways it isn't. I find it to be a more robust system overall, but both the Honey Badger and the Sig Rattler are able to both cycle subs and supers without much of a change, which is really what you want to see in a weapon that can fire 300 blackout. In general, I tend to err towards the Rattler a little bit more than the Honey Badger, just due to the fact that the lower can accept different uppers, right? It can accept both the Rattler upper as well as any um, MCX Virtus upper. So we have a Virtus lower right here with the Rattler upper. I find that to be a little bit more friendly for civilian use where you might have different uppers that you need to slap on to fit different mission sets, uh, whether whatever, whatever type of LARPing that you're doing. So I like that a little bit more. I will also say within the same breath, kinda, that the Honey Badger is a lighter system, it is more purpose built, so it really depends what you're going on. Um, I like the MCX for the utility and the fact that it can be uh, swapped to fill different mission sets, so I do like that about it. Same upper, and you can, uh, of course, different barrel. So right here, we have a 300 Black. This is a subsonic round, this is from AAC. The 300 Black's a really interesting caliber. Right here, we have a 5.56 right next to it. So what was so nice about the 300 Blackout is you can essentially have the same magazine and you can run the 300 Blackout with not a whole lot of hassle. Now what's really cool about 300 Blackout is the capabilities that it has. Because 300 Blackout can be both a supersonic round as well as a subsonic round. So what we mean by that is 5.56 is a supersonic round. Now it can be made subsonic. You can put less powder in it and that projectile won't break the sound barrier. But the problem is that the AR-15 will not reliably cycle that or cycle it at all. 
So there are some issues there if you're wanting to be super duper quiet. Now with 300 Blackout, many of the weapons that are made can both reliably cycle supersonic rounds as well as subsonic rounds. Now, it, it isn't all like La La Land because the supersonic rounds don't quite have the carry distance that the 5.56 does, uh, where the 5.56 is going to have more range, it's a lighter round, there's not a whole lot of powder in these cartridges. So understand that it's not completely a bigger, heavier round being fired out of an AR-15 type system is going to be better. But understand that the 300 Blackout fills a use case scenario. So where it's really good is with the 300 Blackout, you can have a magazine of super. So you go and ambush a car and you fire supersonic rounds. They easily punch the car. They do a lot of damage. And then as you need to exfil from the situation, you can easily switch over to a subsonic magazine and you can be super duper quiet on your way out to not make as much noise or vice versa, where you have a bunch of subs for the actual mission where you're trying to be as quiet as possible. And then if you get compromised in your LARPing, then you can switch over to supers and do a lot more damage. So again, you're not getting that range that you get with 556. Five, At the same time, you have a really cool kind of overall system when it comes to 300 Blackout. So to show you a little bit of that, we'll show you some supers versus subs. Oh, hey, sorry, I didn't see you there. I was busy playing War Thunder. That's why I'm a little sweaty. Now, if you don't know, War Thunder is the sponsor of this particular video. We have to give them a big thank you. Let's talk a little bit about it. War Thunder is one of the most comprehensive combat games ever made with over 2,000 different types of vehicles in dynamic player versus player combat. Um, you'll probably play against me. I actually play this quite a bit and I always die. I'm very bad at it. Now, because I'm obsessed with making models of different World War II vehicles, each of these vehicles in game are obsessively detailed down to the smallest components. It makes for a really interesting dynamic. And the best part, it's free. You can play on Xbox, you can play on PC if you are a complete Chad, or if you have a PlayStation 5, you can play on that as well. And if you register on PC right now, you're gonna get a really cool pack that's going to include uh, multiple premium vehicles, premium accounts, all that kind of stuff, boosters. Go and check it out. One of the best pieces of my mind is customization. You can add different types of camouflages, different decals, and 3D camouflages like bushes and that type of stuff. When your vehicle is hit, it, it, it just isn't like a health bar that goes down. Uh, rather, individual components, uh, crew members are actually killed or knocked unconscious, and it's called their damage x-ray. Big thank you to War Thunder. Let's get back to it. All right, we have four rounds of 140 grain supersonic rounds, and then we have four rounds of 220 grain subsonic rounds. So you'll hear the sound difference. The supers are going to recoil much harder than the subs, so make sure you're watching for that. So those are the supers. Now we're on the subs. Much quieter. Now, a quick note here. You can easily change the gas setting. So right now we have the right side down. That's going to be more gas. You need more gas when you're running subsonic rounds. They don't have as much powder. They're not running the gun as hard. So on that suppressed subsonic setting, you can run supers, but as you can see, it is going to give you a little bit more recoil. If you're primarily running supersonics, you can easily check, uh, take that little gas setting, push it down on the left side, and then you're gonna be running those supersonics a little bit more uh, lightly. You're not gonna have as much recoil. It's not gonna run the gun as hard. However, it's not gonna be running those subsonics. So I typically tend to keep it on the down position on the right side for the more gas for subsonics because I primarily am firing subsonic rounds when it comes to 300 blackout. Okay, next up we have subsonics. Again, they're traveling slower than the speed of sound, which is under 1100 feet per second. We're gonna be firing at a target that is 156 yards. You're gonna hear how long it takes for that slow, slow 220 grain slug to reach there. Um, it's pretty cool. That delay is kind of crazy when it comes to the uh, 300 blackout. So it is a slow round, but uh, as you can see, the 220 grain slugs do hit hard. Um, and these are Sierra Match Kings. They are open tip match. So you definitely don't want to get hit by those. Those are, despite going slow, they're still going to do quite a bit of damage. So don't underestimate it. It's like a 45, but much better travel through the body. Okay, next up we have 220 grain slugs. I'm going to show you the recoil on these guys right here. Despite being a lot more weight, um, there's not really any recoil difference compared to a 5.56. So, I'll show you that right now. Um, yeah, really no difference from 5.56 to 
feels pretty comparable uh, despite firing a much heavier slug. So pretty cool, way to go 300 blackout. But I would say overall 5.56, uh, probably have to do a video. I might eat crow with this statement, but I think 5.56 is a deadlier round. Whew, that's gonna piss people off, we'll see. You ever wondered why I'm not a character in Call of Duty? Because I think about it a lot, but kind of don't want to be associated with what they got going on. In any case, we're going to talk about the Rattler. We're going to do what the Navy loves. We're going to go tip to butt and uh, talk about everything that makes this rifle, this PDW, what it is, and uh, talk about what we think about it. So we're going to start at the tip here, which is going to piss off SIG. Um, I don't like the SIG suppressor. So we have on here a CGS Group Hyperion K. Um, one of my favorite suppressors. I love this thing. I use it on a ton of different guns and it's been performing extremely well. The back pressure is great, and uh, the gas to the face is very minimal, which is what you want on a gun that's almost suppressed 100% of the time. So Hyperion K, big fan, we love them. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll move back to the barrel at this point. At 5.5 inches, it does a fairly good job of flash suppression at night, and uh, you're not getting um, a massive amount of accuracy out of the Rattler. It is a 300 black firing subs primarily. So in my experience, I'm between three, again, I'm firing with a red dot, about three to four MOA. Uh, I'm sure maybe sometimes five, depending on how hot it is outside. It is very hot right now. So it, it's not it, what I consider a precision weapon. I'm sure somebody could probably push it to two or something like that if they were really good, but um, just firing with a red dot, that's perfectly acceptable for the short range nature of the 300 blackout, especially the subs. The supers do do better. Um, however, with a longer barrel, they're of course gonna do way better, which is why you see the other variants out there. But um, when it comes to the civilian version, for a purpose-built PDW weapon, having to fight in and out of a car, in a house, or something like that, the 5.5 300 blackout is absolutely awesome. So one of the nice things, uh, we've already talked about the adjustable gas system, but compared to the Honey Badger, I do like that it is not a um, gas impingent system, that we do have a short stroke gas operated system because um, you do have a lot less uh, fouling getting back into the weapon so it does tend to run cleaner overall over a longer period of time compared to the honey badger isn't really um, me saying that the honey badger is a bad system it's just my uh, maintenance cycles between um, you know round counts is much different between the two systems which is why I tend to uh, kind of air towards the uh, sig rattler so obviously um, the rattler has a tiny tiny handguard so there is a rail space problem when it comes to the rattler and this has led to the development of a lot of different products to solve this problem. As you can see here, we have two M-Lock slots on the three o'clock, the six o'clock, and at the nine o'clock. Um, with some clever products and um, you know a little bit of thought going into it, you're gonna be able to have a weapon that works. If you're just trying to set this up like you would a AR-15, with longer rail space, it's probably not gonna work very well for you. But when it comes to the handguard, the handguard itself actually doesn't have any Picatinny. You can see the handguard ends right here. So what that comes down to is when you're gonna have some type of PEC on there for IR laser light, for night vision work, all that kind of stuff, uh, generally you're gonna wanna run either a mole, so you have that rotated off to the right so you can kind of fit stuff in there, or some other solution. So right here we do have a Boss XE on a experimental mount from Wilcox, but um, GBRS Group obviously has a Hydra, uh, which everybody made fun of, but actually is purpose built for these really short weapon systems where it puts that optic super high. And there's a diving board for that peck to set up front and michael will pop up a picture right here of those so that's why those products were made because when you don't have a whole lot of grip space you really can't have the peck there it kind of really screws with your grip if we take a look at what we have right here we do have a surefire scout light this is the turbo model and then we have the um, tail switch coming down to a modified bcm angled grip that's been chopped this work was done by a gangster grip guy on instagram and as you can see right here the button allows me to activate that I'm a big fan of saving rail space right there, especially on this particular platform. So that is a pretty cool little product he's come out with. On the opposite side, this pressure pad that is offset is from Wilcox, and that connects to the Boss XE. Because the Boss XE is not just a um, optic, it also has a laser, has IR laser, has IR illuminator. So it's kind of a peck and an optic combined, a couple other things as well, but we're not gonna get into that. But that's why we have the pressure pad right there. We have that cord running back right there. I could probably do a little bit better of cable management there. We have that zip tied in place and then we have that connected into the Boss XE. The Boss XE sits way too low um, without a riser. So we actually talked with Wilcox. We had them develop this riser right here. The back is for a um, flipped side magnifier such as an EOTech or maybe their own, but it's not really necessary on the 300 blackout. 
But um, I do like the Boss XE. We'll talk about it for just a moment. The Boss XE was specifically designed to work with 300 Blackout because obviously your zeros between a supersonic round and a subsonic round are gonna be somewhat different. Because of that, what they have right here is a mechanical built-in zero change. So what you do is you zero the optic, and then what you can do is you can set the mechanical zero by switching it, and you can adjust that um, elevation change to the subsonic round. So when you switch between sub supers to subs, you can make sure that your rounds are hitting true. Now, in addition to that, what's really cool about it is it also has uh, iron sights built in. So there are iron sights built into the system, and uh, those also have a mechanical shift with the zero. So the lasers, the iron sights within the optic, and the optic itself when, there's, when you're zeroing all move together, which is pretty cool. So it is a very expensive optic. Uh, for 300 blackout, I consider it pretty cool. I know some people have some um, issues with it as far as its illuminator is concerned. Um, I personally like it for this application. So I know we spent a lot of time talking about setup, but when it comes to kind of a um, odd weapon system, such as what we have right here, everyone's gonna get mad at me saying weapon system. Um, it, it's important to talk about setup because there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of thought. Um, so you kind of want to modify what you've typically known with uh, you know some new factors that come into play. Um, when your handguard's so short, you definitely want some type of vertical grip because having your, your wrist at like the typical angle is gonna be extremely uncomfortable. So definitely having the vertical grip to make sure that you're gripping um, your wrist is in a more natural position is going to be uh, important here. So some type of vertical, gri vertical grip works. So we've talked enough about setup. We're going to move back to the controls. So the controls are very much so like a Virtus. Um, we have our bolt release. We have our bolt hold open. I've always liked like the SIG one where it's a little bit wider so you can get to it to hold that bolt back when you're doing malfunctions. We have a ambi mag release. And then on the opposite side, we have our very fat, very big magazine release. Um, we have no, uh, no way to release the bolt on this side, otherwise than actuating the charging handle, other than actuating the charging handle right here. Moving over to the safety. Safety is well designed. It is very AR-15 like. We have safe, semi, and then of course we'd have uh, full freaking auto on the other side. And like it should be, uh, we have a small selector right there for the same side, a little accuracy fire, all that kind of stuff. Grip, I've always been a fan of the grip when it comes to the SIG products, very nice, um, very flat angle, which I like. Now, with all that being said, let's talk a little bit about the trigger. So on this guy, we have a surprise, surprise, Geisley SSA. Um, it is specifically designed for the MCX because uh, regular AR triggers don't work. On the LT versions, the regular AR triggers work, but on these older ones, they don't. So we'll go ahead and we'll do what we always do. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna ghost that trigger together. Let's go and let's feel it. So. We have a little bit of play right there, about a pound and a half. We have our let off. Feel that again, reset, quick. And from that reset, maybe a pound and a half. It is a short reset, it is a beautiful feeling trigger. And if you're going to have a MCX, I would highly recommend that you have a Geisley trigger. All right, coming over to here, the side of the handguard, we do have a QD slot and Thankfully, it is locking. Thank God. Thank you, Sig. You know what you're doing. We have that on both sides over here. We also have those at the rear of the receiver. And then on our stock that we have right here, uh, this one's from Sheffield Tactical. It is a LVA prototype reproduction, which is super fucking cool because I'm a nerd. Um, also locking um, to, to a, a little bit more rotation, but perfect for what I want from a stock. So those are the QD positions. Moving back and moving from the QDs, we do have our stock. Um, like I said before, Sheffield Tactical, and it is folding, just like every other 1913 MCX stock. So again, you just push up on that, that folds to the side, and the weapon will still fire when it is folded. Say hello, my little friend! And especially if you have like a Virtus lower already and you're switching between, you know, a 14.5, 16, or an 11.5 down to a Rattler as, you need, as needed, that's cool. Just understand it is very purpose-built, and because of that, there are a lot of drawbacks. 300 sub does not have a lot of range, does not have a lot of accuracy. There's a lot of problems. Now, that being said, it is super duper murder quiet. So if you're going to get a Rattler, understand it is a very purpose built gun. It is not our first choice. It is a choice, a tool for the tool bag, and it is well designed. With the Honey Badger, I consider them both to be excellent, excellent 300 blackout hosts, and I would choose either of them and be happy with my choice. So find the one that's going to work for you and go from there. Um, the other factor is it looks cool as fuck. So 
Um, if you like cool looking guns, it certainly fits that mold. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I love doing these types of videos where I go kind of in depth on these different types of rifles. So get out there, find what's gonna work for you. But the most important thing is gonna be training. If you're not training with this guy, then you're gonna suck with it. Um, if you're not training CQB with your boys, uh, just because don't do CQB alone, then you're gonna die. So get out there, find the rifle that's gonna work with you, train with the boys, get good with it, and that's gonna be terrifying. Some guy with a Rattler at 150 yards, which is kind of starting to push it on 300 black with the subs, still gonna be hella scared of him, especially if he's a trained guy. So <clears throat> with all that being said, guys, get outside, have a good time. We really appreciate you guys. Tons of great videos coming, and we've got, uh, we've got nothing else for you guys. Okay, final thing, dad advice. All right, I've got four kids. I should be able to do this, right, Justin? Yep. Um, don't be a friend with your kids. What I mean by that is that little person, that kid, that teenager is going to be an adult, and the adult world doesn't give a fuck about them. So if you're not teaching your kid hard life lessons, if they're not growing up to be a, a, a tough, a resilient, a logical, a emotionally mature human being, and you're doing them a disservice because life doesn't care. So when you're sitting there with your kids, think about that. Make sure that you're teaching them consequences, that you're doing all those things that matter, and that you're raising a well-adjusted adult that will not trust the government. As always, guys, thank you for watching. We got nothing else for you. All right, video is about done. We want to give a big shout out again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Go follow that link below. Go play it. It is free. You get cool stuff if you register on PC using my link. Thank you guys so much much.